Welcome to Chalk Walks, case number one. Hi everybody, <clears throat> welcome to the first of the series of Chalk Walks. In Chalk Walks, we're going to walk you through therapy about specific cases. And basically, the way that you might want to think about it is what we've got going on here. We've got uh, somebody looking down from above, somebody who's in the clinic, uh, one of your supervisors. You've got you trying to learn how to do things in the clinic, and, and I'm, I'm going to play the boxer, and I'm going to try to help explain this to you, what's going on, what's uh, a little bit of protective. Yeah, you need, you need a little bit of help here a little bit of security, and I think what I hope to do is to take real cases, authentic cases, you know, on, anonymize them, and then go from there and talk about exactly uh, what we want on that case in terms of the therapy. So our first case is an eight-year-old female spade chihuahua, uh, two and a half kilograms. I'm going to present two cases in this series because they are very similar and almost typical of, of a certain type of a case. The problem this dog had was hematomesis, hematochesia, and they suspected the condition called HGE, hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. Uh, hematocrit was 66%, which is a good piece of evidence in this, something like that, and they estimated the dog uh, only to have 5% dehydration. So let's take a look at the therapy. I'm, I'm actually writing it down, what it is they did. They gave 100 mils sub-Q in the, in the emergency clinic, and then 21 mils per hour uh, continuous IV fluids of lactated ringers. And so let's, let's break this down. So if they said the dog was 5% dehydrated, based upon that, uh, you'd expect that, um, you know, you might then have... Um, roughly 125 mils of, this is the dog's weight in a sense, um, we usually convert kilograms to liters or to um, milligrams, and or to grams, excuse me. So you had 125 mils is the dehydration part, and so they tried to rehydrate the animal right away by giving subcute fluids. I'm going to suggest that if you have a chance to get a catheter in an animal with a condition like HGE, do it as soon as possible. This is not something to wait about. And then they gave 21 mils per hour lactated ringers. So if you multiply 21 times uh, 24, what is that? That's uh, 480, 504, it's 504 milliliters per day, and we estimate that to be about 200 mils per kilogram for that dog. So that's a very, uh, if, if a maintenance rate is 500 mil, 50 milliliters, excuse me, per kilogram, 200 milliliters per kilogram is fairly aggressive, and that's what you have to do in cases like this. You have to give fluids very aggressively because of the concern of sludging of blood uh, and uh, animals can die because of that. So these animals are vomiting and hemoconcentrated, vomiting blood, losing blood in both ends, hemoconcentrating, and that's what you have to fight. Um, just to give you an idea down here of the possibility for um, the, the rate that you can give per hour, I want you to be thinking about the concept of 80 milliliters per kilogram in a dog. This is the blood volume, and in theory, you should be able to give a maximum rate of 80 milliliters per kilogram per hour to an animal. Um, well, safely, no, but you have to, that, that is the upper limit that you can expect to get in the animal and have it do any benefit. Now, in general, you're going to need, you know, two, two catheters, juggler catheters to get this in. Uh, you may um, need, you certainly need to monitor the animal carefully. But that is the upper limit that I want you to think about. So when um, 
and where does this come from? So one blood volume is 80 milliliters per kilogram. Um, the entire interstitial volume is going to be the combination of these two, so around 400 milliliters per kilogram. Or excuse me, the uh, extracellular volume, including the rest of it being interstitial. And then about 600 milliliters per kilogram is going to be intracellular. So uh, just keeping all that in mind, the reason you can only expect that the interstitial fluid will exchange in uh, the fluid in the vascular compartment within a one hour period. Um, so what are the other therapies that are being provided here? Famotidine, um, this is an H2 antagonist. to reduce acidity. To be honest, we're not sure if this dog is vomiting or because of gastric ulceration, although if it has frank blood, this may be the case. Um, it certainly can, is not particularly wrong to give it. Um, Sucral fate targeting the same sort of thing, which is uh, sometimes called the Band-Aid, uh, which requires acid environment, so you want to stagger the these two therapies, stagger them, because H2 antagonists will cause an elevation of uh, pH in the in the stomach, and the sucral fate works best, it works best in an acid environment. And then we have metronidazole, Metronidazole is a drug that is primarily, it's an antimicrobial directed at anaerobes. And we have an animal here who is in shock. And what is the shock organ in a dog? The shock organ is the liver. And the liver is full of anaerobes. And so one of the things they're trying to do is to prevent those anaerobes from growing. Um, Meropitan is an antiemetic that we consider to be a broad spectrum antiemetic, meaning that it will control vomiting of most sorts, uh, working at the emetic center. And it's an NK neurokinin 1 antagonist. So it will, being broad spectrum, it will control vomiting, in this case, clearly coming from. Um, afferent input from the GI tract to the emetic center causing vomiting, as well as possibility of circulating toxins hitting the chemoreceptor trigger zone and that also causing vomiting. So this is uh, the therapy that was used in this case. Very aggressive fluid therapy is essential. What about the next case? Our next case, actually seen on the same day, was a six-year-old male castrated mixed-breed dog. Now this one is 19 kilograms. Same, more or less the same, history, hematomesis, hematochesia, and a hematocrit of 78%, 7 uh, percent dehydrated. This dog is at great risk of uh, developing a, a real problem with regards to its circulation and uh, secondary um, coagulation problems, etc. So we need to get be very aggressive with the therapy. So let's take a look at what was done. In this case, the, the dog got 150 milliliters per hour, 150 milliliters per hour times 24 is 3,600 mils, divided by 19 is about 187 milliliters per kilogram per day. Um, this dog also, when you see it was suspected of HGE, with a hematocrit of 78%, you have to. And so this is also um, aggressive fluid therapy. Doesn't make any difference what kind, um, just a balanced electrolyte solution. Okay, then we have the same four characters for treatment as we did before, so I don't think I need to explain those again. Um, metronidazole, sucralfate, famotidine, and meropitan. And uh, I would make the comment that when we would see these cases um, decades ago, uh, we would 
probably mainly focus on fluid therapy and those animals would get better or they wouldn't get better. And the one um, thing we sometimes added was um, Pepto-Bismol, uh, but we now know Pepto-Bismol because of the salicylate that's in it. It's called magnesium subsalicylate. While it would reduce secretions, it, it would maybe calm down the inflammation uh, going on. The, um, the, the bismuth subsalicylate in Pepto-Bismol The salicylate can be uh, contributing to gastric and intestinal ulceration. So probably not the best therapy, uh, and sucralfate's a better choice.